up. I love this. Stepping up. I love this idea of stepping up. Because stepping up to me, even though, now you can look at this little goldfish, I'm not sure he's going to make it. But I bet that he will, or she, will continue to make that leap until she finds herself in a new environment. Because what are our choices? We can step up or we can step down. <laughs> we can step away. No, 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 no. We can fall down. No, 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 no. We can run away. No, 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 no. The only choice is to step up. Because any circumstance in our life, we put there. This whole idea that we're creating our reality is so multifaceted. Because we create our reality, we look at it, and then we go, oh, no, I can't deal with that. We're the one who put it there. We're the one who put it there because it has something for us to grow through, to experience more of who we are. And when we look at that experience that seems to be on the outside, that we put there, and we call it bigger than we are, or impossible, or overwhelming, or something that we just can't do anything about, and we choose not to step up at that moment. We step down, we fall down, we step away, we run away. Then we have chosen not to have all that that bigger bowl has for us. And we go, well, there's just no bigger bowl for me. You know, all the other little goldfish, they get a bigger bowl, but I'm stuck in this little tiny, limited environment just because we don't choose to give it a go, to try, to move out of who we are. And, and I've done this all my life. I look back on my life and I'm, I'm frankly just moved by who I am. <laughs> because all of the times that I have just gathered up every ounce of courage that I had with shaking hands and knocking knees, pumping heart and stepped up to something else. All of the times that I have done that has allowed me to finally have a life like this. I have a great life. I have a great life because I made it that way. Oh, Barbara, you were born in with a silver spoon in your mouth. No, I wasn't. Oh, Barbara, well, you just had life handed to you on a, on a silver platter. No, I didn't. But I know that when we reach those crossroads in our life where we have a choice to either step up or step down, those are the times that determine what kind of a life we're going to have. I'm reading a great book. It's by somebody. Forget her name. <laughs> but she's the chief operating officer of Facebook. And it's called Leaning In. And I love it. I'm not, I'm not through it yet, so I can't, can't really give you too much. Other than she talks about what I love. She talks about the self-imposed limitation, and it's very gender-specific towards women. The self-imposed limitation that women in particular put upon themselves based on their projection of what other people are going to think about them. And how we sell ourselves so short because we want to be liked. Because see, stepping up doesn't come without a price. When we step up, it's possible that we will make a splash. <laughs> it's possible that we might make a little mess. It's possible that we might make a noise. It's possible that we may leave other people in their own little bowls behind. But when we do that, we find that we are more than we thought we were. We find that we get to live in a bigger bowl. We get to have a bigger experience because we chose to step up. The name of the book that I'm reading is called Leaning In, and I love that. It's kind of like stepping up, leaning in. It reminds me of when I used to do a lot of Native American ceremony. And I would find myself, I don't know how I would get into these situations, in what is called a Native American sweat lodge. Now, a Native American sweat lodge is this little bubble on the ground that's made with willow branches, and then they put all these blankets, on these wool blankets, and then they cover it with plastic, and there's a hole in the middle of it, and they take rocks that have been heating in a fire for hours, 
and they take it and they bring it in the hole in the middle and you've got all these people, you're crammed, you know, just like this, you can't move, much less breathe, and they bring these hot rocks in and then somebody in their infinite wisdom puts water on them. <laughs> So I would find myself in these Native American sweat lodges all pushed up with people in this heat, such heat, amazing heat. Heat, like you think that the flesh is melting off of your bones, heat. And then you hear the water sizzle, splash, sputter, and a second later, a wall of steam literally hits you. Now, this is some kind of prayer, and I guess the point of the prayer is to turn away from the condition and to focus on spirit and move into your gratitude, because that's all you got to hang on to at that moment. But other people would be putting their face down in the dirt. They would be frantically trying to find an edge of the lodge to lift it up a little bit and get a breath of air. They would be crying. And what I would do is I would get up on my knees, and I would put my head at the top of the lodge and I would lean forward into the heat because I knew if I gave my fear half a chance it would own me it would rule me in that moment because there was something to be afraid of and if I gave in to that that there's no way I would be able to stay I would be the one screaming and crying and calling open the door and let me out and frantically trying to get away from it. And I said, this is a microcosm of life because we put ourselves in these positions. We put ourselves in the fire. We put ourselves in the lodge. We create a situation. Why? So that we can heal, so that we can grow, so that we can expand in our lives. And then we look at the situation and we are at a point of choice. Are we going to run from what we have created our chance to heal, our chance to grow, our chance to release that which has kept us small, or are we going to step up into it? Are we going to rise up in consciousness to take the high road, to live the aware life, and to let all of the smallness go by the wayside? What are we going to do in that moment? Those moments make all the difference in our lives. So we have this experience called we create our reality. And then we have a reaction to the reality that we created. And depending on that reaction or that response, we get a new reality. I often tell people, don't worry so much about what's going on in your life today. It's old news. It's a byproduct of your creation up until now. If you want to think about something, think about what you're creating now. <coughs> What are you doing in this moment? What are you doing with this situation, with this circumstance? And how is that going to manifest in your tomorrow? How much of you are you willing to bring forth into this? Are you willing to go beyond your fear? Are you willing to go beyond what you've done up until now? Are you willing to experience life at a greater level than you did before? Because if you're not, you're not going to have anything different. And I say this to me. To do the same thing over and over again and expect a new experience is crazy. It's the def definition of insanity in 12-step programs. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, that's crazy. And so if we have an experience in our life that we either, we either want to heal it, we want to let it go, or we want to grow into it, we have to be different inside of ourselves. Yes. Then we have that moment of are we going to step up or are we going to step away? Because we created it, but we are such master manifestors. All of life pours forth through us, so we can set it up really good. Yeah. We can come up with a good story about how it's too hard. It's never been done before. That person is just too me. Did you see the way they looked at me? How am I supposed to step up when I have this to deal with? We did it. We took a perfectly good person and made them mean. <laughs> I see it happen over and over again. People come up to me and they say, oh, that person is just so awful. And I say, interesting, you're the only person that they're awful to. And then they say, well, that person is awful. And that person is awful. Well, you live in, in a, surrounded by awful people. What's the common denominator here? <laughs> it's you. Because other people are saying, well, that person is just so wonderful. 
and that person is wonderful, and that person is wonderful. So we create that experience, and then we look at it, and we say, well, I can't be all that I'm meant to be. I cannot be the powerful God being that I've come to planet Earth to be because that person is awful. Step up. What is within us that we need to release, that we need to heal, that we need to let go of, that we need to embrace for us to get the bigger bowl? What is it inside of that little goldfish? I love that picture because that is quite the jump. That is quite the jump for that little goldfish. Now, I don't think anybody had private coaching lessons with them and said, you can do it, you can do it. Thousands of other goldfish have gone before you and you can do it. I think that little goldfish just got sick and tired of being in a little bowl. So I wonder when we get sick and tired of being in our little life, what we are willing to do. Now, one thing that you risk by jumping out of that which is known is you risk not getting back in your old bowl, not getting into your new bowl, but lying on the table. <laughs> and isn't that the picture that we use to keep us from jumping? Oh, well, don't jump, you might flap. You might end up just laying on the table, and then what will happen? And then, you know, you would have rather had that little bowl. I don't think so. I've lived in little bowls a lot. I think being willing to flap is a key part of our ability to jump. It motivates us so that we can get out of all that we have known to be true and trust that there is a bigger bowl somewhere. Spirit calls me to this life where I have plenty of money. Well, then you have to be willing to step up. You have to suck it up and deal with the fact that you're rich. But I'm not. Yes, you are. But people won't like me if I'm rich. So what? You'll get new people who will like you rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, what will I tell your, my family? Whatever you want. The Spirit is calling me to be this being of power and clarity. Well, then you have to be willing to step up. You have to suck it up and deal with the fact that the power of the universe is inside of you right now. That you are crystal clear by focusing on what you don't want, you manifest it. If you will simply shift your focus to what you want, you will manifest it. But you have to be willing to make that change. And you know, <coughs> chances are that you're right, that people will mock you. People mock us all the time. They leave phone messages. <laughs> you're leading those people to hell. Hellfire and damnation. You're just taking all those people down. Well, if that's the way they want to see it, that's fine. So you may get mocked. You may make a mess. You may make some noise. But what you get out of that is that your life completely changes. Now, if I was going to create this slide, I would have bowl after bowl after bowl after bowl into infinity. And you know, the first one is the only one that's unknown. Because once you jump from the little world that you always thought was all that there was into the big bowl, you've already done it once and you know it. It's that first time that you've got to be willing to lose it all. You've got to be willing to die. You've got to be willing to flap on the table, to go for this idea that says there's something more for me. And I am willing to be that person, to have that life. I love this teaching because it makes quality people. We don't support people in being unconscious. We don't support people in blaming and being angry and gossiping and fighting and staying small. You won't stay here long if you want that life. We support people in looking around, being mindful that this is their creation. And if it's going on on the outside, it's going on within them. And what do they need to do inside of them to heal this or to grow through it so that they can have a different outside reality? Yeah. If you see it, it's yours to do. Wow. 
people come up to me and they say, well, do you know blah, 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 blah is wrong here? I didn't even notice it. If you see it, it must be yours to do. Yeah. Yeah. And if I see it, it's mine to do. I can create circumstances that have to do with people outside of me that seem to not have anything to do with me except my life is in their life and their life is in my life. So that's about me. People say, well, Barbara, you can't just take responsibility for everything that happens. Yes, I can. I can take responsibility for the rain. Thank you. It washed all the pollen out of the sky. Yes. Yes. I can take responsibility for the temperature in the room. I certainly can take responsibility for this building. I built it. I can take responsibility for you, and you can take responsibility for me. I am a reflection of your consciousness, and i got to say, you're looking good today. <laughs> and you are mine. We come together to learn how to live a life where we don't sit by and wait idly for some anthropomorphic deity to decide that we have been good enough. We take responsibility for our lives by saying there is a power and a presence within us that is all power and all presence. And that I can have the life that I want to live as long as I am willing to become that in my world. That nothing can stop me, nothing can take it away from me, and nothing can give it to me but me. That my life is a direct reflection of my consciousness, and so I'm going to step up, and I'm going to pay attention, and I'm going to be mindful of what's happening in everything. If I have a feeling, if I have a thought, if I speak a word, I'm going to pay attention to that to know if that's what I want to live out in my life. And if I don't, if that's some kind of stinking thinking, if that's some kind of low life living, I'm going to step up. Because I don't want to live the low life. I want to live the high life. I want to live the life that says, you are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. All of the kingdom is yours. What do you want? Oh, I can't have that. That person is just awful. It's just too hard. Life is just too hard. I'm just dealt up off deck. No. What do you want? Well, dare I? Dare I want? Yes, dare it. I want to be rich. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be successful. I want to live my passion and live my bliss. I want to live the life of my dreams. And life says, okay. All you have to do is step up. All you have to do is leave that belief system that says life is a little tiny bowl and you just go round and round and round for your whole life and then you die. To step up, to be willing to leave that. And that means to be willing to leave your people, your job, your identity, even the way you look. Because when you step up, everything changes. Your face will change. Your body will change. Your money, your, your money market, your bank account will change. <laughs> your portfolio will change. Everything changes. If you're willing to step up, if you're willing to let go. I think Steve Jobs is one of the geniuses of our day. And this is an ad that ran. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round heads in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And when some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. That was an ad for Apple computers. <coughs> Here's to the crazy ones, the ones who just aren't going to stay put, the ones who are not going to take what life gave them and sit there quietly and not make any noise and not do anything any differently. Here's to the crazy ones, the ones that are crazy enough to believe that there is a power and a presence within them that is God itself. 
They say we're crazy because we believe that we are God. Yes, we do, but we believe everybody else is too. We believe everything is. That whatever God is, God showed up in time and space. That there is nothing outside of God. And because that is, that is manifest in everything, it's got to be in us. And then, then I, was, I was not going to give you a science lesson, but I will. <laughs> and then quantum physics comes along and says, in order for a unity to exist, it must exist in its totality at every point simultaneously. So you can't even hide behind, well, I'm just a little part of God. I'm just a little part of God. I don't ask too much of me. I'm just a little part of God. You're not. You either are all of God or none of God. And if you were none of God, we wouldn't be here because time and space would not be. You are all of God. You have all of the power. You have all of the potential. You have all of the wisdom, all of the intelligence, all of the ability. It's just your choice what you're going to do. The next time you create a healing crisis, the next time you create an obstacle, the next time you notice that you're just tired of going round and round in the same little bowl that you've always gone round and round with in. That's the time that you get to choose. You can step down. You can run away. You can fall down. You can pretend. Or you can be the powerful, creative, spiritual being that you came to planet Earth to be. God made manifest in form as you and you can step up. And it may not happen the first time. You may need to step up a couple of times. But if you step up and continue to rise up into the life that you want, you will find that you are living in a whole new world. Nobody gave it to you. Nobody can take it away from you. It was always there waiting for you to jump into it. You did it because you stepped up. And so it is.